everyone, I'm Lisa from ProWriting Aid, and I just wanted to thank you for joining us for another session in the ProWriting Aid session for writers. Uh, my guest today is Alexa Bigwarf. So Alexa has been with us before. I'm sure some of you have been in her trainings before, um, but for any of you that are new, she's the founder of the Write, of Write Publish Sell, which is a company dedicated to helping authors get through the massive process of writing and publishing their books. Um, and I also know that lots of you have probably attended her annual event, which is the Women in Publishing Summit. Um, we always sponsor it at Providing Aid. It's a really exciting event, and there's so many people um, that are inspiring each other and working together. So it's a really great, it's a great event to attend. So Alexa, thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me back again. Oh, I love your webinars. <laughs> Yeah, Alexa was one of the very first ones that we did way back in March when Alexa was, or when um, lockdown was first happening. So it's good to have you back again when, now that the world's in slightly less, well, is it? Slightly less. <laughs> I don't know. It feels the same to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my okay, gosh. So um, like last time, I'm just going to disappear into the background here and learn along with anybody else. Um, so I'm just going to hand over to you. Go for it. Awesome, here we go, all right. So everybody can see all these slides. Okay, so when I was uh, talking to Lisa about different topics, I, I pitched this one in particular because what we see happening overall is a great improvement in books that are published by indies, but still a lot of people who have a large learning curve to go out there. And we really like, through the Women in Publishing Summit, through my company, Write, Publish, Sell, we really like to help people make sure when they publish as an indie or if they go with a hybrid press or however they wind up um, publishing their book, that their end product looks no different than a book that you might see published by any other publisher. Um, it's really important to us to, to help alleviate the stress behind trying to get to that place because as any of you who have already started down the path know, it's a really, really complex journey. And people will often say, oh, you know, I just threw my book on Amazon. I just published my book. And so many people make it seem like it's so simple, but there's so many small things that really need to be happening to make sure that 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 when you put that book out there, it's one that your readers want, that, re that meets the genre expectations, that makes you feel proud of it when you're telling people about it. And I've had a couple books I never wanted to market because I wasn't proud of them and we don't wanna be there. So um, I, I'm curious, and I don't know how well I'll be able to see the chat, but um, I am curious to know where people are in their process. If you're, if you're working on your first book, if you've published a couple of books, um, and I will try and look at the chat later on to see that. But okay, the chat just popped up over here. Let me see it. Um, Y'all, I'm having a day today. Um, you know, if you're ready to begin this journey as a published indie author, do you really know what it takes to stand out from the crowd? Because right now there are millions of books on Amazon. There are so many books out there being published every single day. Uh, we're in the process of um, promoting a YA book, uh, The Wise One, that's coming out at the end of the month. And we've been reaching out to a bunch of other authors in the genre to get blurbs from them and we can't even get past their websites because there's a giant thing that says I cannot take any more blurb requests everybody's writing a book so everybody's asking for me to review this book so it's, it's really important that as you are going through this process if you want to see sales and if you want to make a living as a writing or bring in some income um, a supplemental income from your writing then your book has to be a step above the 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 crowded area out there so one thing that i kind of laugh about but it's really not very funny are the oopses and the worst thing ever 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 is to publish your book and then all of a sudden you're like oops and we see this, it happens on a regular basis in our Write, Publish, Sell Facebook group. We'll have somebody come in and they're like, oh my gosh, I didn't know this was going to happen or it's this day and this is happening or why didn't I know to do that? So my goal today is to kind of walk you through some of those things so that you don't have those oopses. I want to teach you what publishing like a pro is. I want to um, give you the information that you need to know that many indies don't know. And the way that I know that Mindy, Indi Mindy, many indies don't know this is that 
we hear them coming to us or sending us emails or saying I did this and I didn't realize this. So it's kind of my uh, my best of <laughs> list of what we hear on a regular basis. And then um, give you some resource and tips for success. And I would be, I would be, um, I would be, I can't think of the word, good grief, it's the end of the week, y'all. I would be remiss, that's the word, if I didn't also include some launch tips. Just so you guys know, I am. Um, I have three kids that are full-time e-learning with me at home, and um, we pod school, so today they're not at my house, but Mondays and Tuesdays, I have seven kids in my house. So by the time Thursday rolls around, I'm almost certifiable. So please excuse any gaffes in my speech. Um, it's been a long six months. <laughs> so let me tell you a little bit about me if you are brand new to me so that you know where I'm coming from and um, where my experience is. I'm a mom and that's how my writing journey started actually. Um, through a personal tragedy with one of our children, I started blogging about grief and loss and then went on to um, publish a book for grieving mothers. Um, throughout that process, I continued to write, fell in love with the process of books and writing and, and helping people with my words really and um, eventually started writing on parenting things and did some other books and other projects and um, people started coming to me and saying how are you doing this I want to publish a book too how did you do this how do you write a book how do you blah 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 so write publish sell was born out of all of everybody coming to me and I'm a natural person that wants to help people so I started helping people down this this um, this journey and it's been amazing and we've added on the summit as we'll talk about the summit a little bit at the end we've added on some other programs and fun things and it's just it's a fun journey to help people get their words into the world I do have three publishing houses the first one um, Cat Biggie Press. I learned when I was publishing my first book that I wanted to um, have an imprint so that my book looked professional. So st step one is knowing how to create an imprint. And an imprint is just this, Cat Piggy Press, Purple Butterfly Press, Chrysalis Press. It's the name associated with your book when it's published. If you've seen the, the books on um, Amazon in the details portion, it'll say published by, and you can often see the indie authors because it'll say their name or it'll say nothing or something like that. So that's one quick tip to make sure that you look um, a, be, you know, a little more professional than everyone else is having your own imprint. And it can be anything as long as it's not uh, trademarked or um, you know, otherwise not allowed to be used. So as you can see, I have a thing with butterflies. Um, absolutely love the butterflies. Um, they were a symbol after we lost our daughter, kind of, and maintain, uh, remain a, a symbol of hope for us. So I started with Cat Biggie Press, and um, along the way, children's book authors just kept coming to me and coming to me and coming to me. And I didn't know anything about children's books, but finally I was like, okay, this is what we're meant to do. We're going to do some children's books. So we created created Purple Butterfly Press so that we would have our own publishing house just for children's books. And oh my goodness, are we having fun with that. And then Chrysalis Press is my um, most beautiful logo. It's That's a hand-painted logo. <laughs> but um, we are in experimentation mode. My other two houses are what's called hybrid presses. So for those of you who are not familiar with a hybrid press, a hybrid press Th those of us who are truly trying to publish by the publishing standards uh, aim to operate just like a traditional publishing house would be in what we do for our authors. But the difference is it's a partnership. Because of the expenses um, with publishing and with new authors and all that kind of stuff, it can be a little bit risky. It's a partner model where the, the, the author does indeed and contribute to some of the expenses of publication and launch. However, their royalties are much, much higher, 60% or higher, um, as opposed to 10 to 12% in the, in the traditional world. So Chrysalis Press is our attempt to see if we can make a go in the traditional world. And we currently have one book and we're working that hard to see what happens with that one. So here are some of our um, covers. And as you can see, a beautiful cover is really important. So this is a tip of pub publishing like a pro as well, is hire a professional cover designer. Um, just as important as having a professional editor is having a cover that meets the genre expectations that, that is going to allow your reader to know 
what your book is about that fits in there. And we have uh, several different cover designers that we work with. They are all amazing. Sometimes with the Lose the Cape book, we um, you might recognize the, the drawings here. Adrian Hedger has become a really well-known illustrator in the parenting world, and she's done all four of our Lose the Cape books. Um, so, you know, you, you want to make sure that you, that you have covers that are going to stand out and really make your book shine. The Wise One is our newest YA book. It launches at the end of the month, and we love this cover. It is so gorgeous. If you like witches and stories about witchcraft, you should definitely check that one out. Um, okay. I feel like um, I might have missed a slide here or there in the other, in the roundabout order, but um, one of the ways to get there, to get the knowledge that you need is some serious professional development time. I have um, committed myself to learning every detail I can about the publishing industry. And I am almost nine years into this and I am still learning new stuff every single day. So if you are of the mindset that you have published one book and now you know everything there is to know about publishing, I need you to fix that mindset first and foremost. Because now granted, I will say if you're not like we are, where we're trying to learn everything about every genre under the sun, it does become a little bit easier when you're committed to learning one specific genre and really getting down into the down and dirty of that one genre. It will really um, narrow your focus down. But there are professional organizations for all of us across the board. There's the um, Independent Book Publishers Association, which is geared towards publishers but they are also geared towards independent authors who treat themselves as publishers. So there's a lot of fantastic information and I'll talk about some of the resources that you should have from them that will really help you uh, make sure that your book is on par with what it should be. Uh, the American Booksellers Association, I'm a member of that. I love going to their conferences when they have them live and in person. Oh my gosh, can you learn a lot of stuff from booksellers as an author when it comes to marketing and even writing your book. So don't be afraid. Don't think that, oh, that, and I forgot to include the American Library Association as well, the ALA. Those types of organizations are a gold mine for information on, on you as learn, learning how to be a professional author as a publisher. Um, for children's books, the SCBWI, member of that too, got to know what's going on behind the scenes and what, what is happening um, that impacts us as we are trying to publish good books. Of course, Ally, the Authors Guild, the Nonfiction Authors Association. I mean, we could list and list and list and list, but there are so many great ways to learn from these organizations. Pro Writing Aid is an, I'm glad y'all are here. They're doing so much wonderful stuff on their blog and in their um, books that they provide to their authors and in these webinar series, which is, which are incredible. So, um, you know, take the time to learn. This is, this is, a, I think, because of uh, the nature of the world and not just Corona, but how our industry is just changing massively with more AI and with more, um, you know, digital and, and online things like that. We will never, I don't believe we'll ever come to a time in our author career where things are not seriously changing and evolving. Um, if you have the opportunity, go to conferences. And while we cannot go in, in person to most of them right now, almost everybody is moving their stuff online in some kind of way. Um, I, I learned a lot by going to the Digital Book World, by going to the Book Expo America. I had hoped to go to London for the book fair um, this year, but thank, thankfully I didn't have tickets for that because of what happened. But um, we'll talk more about the Women in Publishing, Women in Publishing Summit. Um, harder to say than it seems, but there are so many ways that you can learn from other people. And I tell you, just getting out and not only not only learning from um, the businesses and the organizations that are out there, but getting together with other authors and forming relationships and talking about what's working and what's not working and how, how you're doing things, how you're approaching things. If you don't have besties in the author world that are writing in your genre, I would encourage you to start forming your friends committee right now because there's so much that you can do with other authors, particularly writing in the same genre. They are not your competition. They are your best source of support, really. Okay, so how you publish like a pro. I've already been kind of dropping some nuggets along the way, but here we go. Your book is your business. 
um, or at least this is what we're hoping to go for as we're professionally publishing, right? We we all strive, um, I would assume if you're here, you're striving to be making an, a living from writing or at least making enough of a supplemental income that it means something to you. Um, if you're a hobbyist, then none of this stuff is going to matter to you. So enjoy the enjoy the slides. <laughs> okay, so if you're indie publishing, you have to think like a publisher. So I'm talking business plans, budgets, strategies, all these things that nobody wants to think about, but you are running a business now, especially if you have multiple books, um, if you're doing other things to enhance your income as an author, going to speaking events, doing workshops, all those types of things, you now have to think like a small business owner. Okay, so that's just kind of a side note is that that's, that's important at, through all of this. But then the key things, a professionally produced and marketed book, have it edited, have a professional cover. Um, there are a lot of people who are still trying to do their own covers. Pause for water and effect. Um, I just wanna say one thing about this. Even if you think it's a gorgeous cover, there is probably still a chance that it's not is gonna set you up for success, unless you are a graphic designer, obviously. Um, you know, there are some incredible designers out there who are working solely on book covers that can at least give you an assessment of your cover and say, yes, this, this is in line with the standards or mm, I would move this around. You guys, I never realized how much thought goes into the placement of a title on a book and graphics and like the way things they do things with colors and, and things because of where your eyes go. Like there's a lot to it that, uh, that we non-designers don't always recognize. Um, and, and choice of fonts can be a, a really big issue if nobody can read your um, title or things. So I'm going to stop harping on that, but I really think, you know, we talk a lot about professional editing and how important it is, but getting that professional cover is so important too. And guess what? You can get a fabulous cover for between $100 and $300. Um, we do it with every single one of our books. So, Okay, um, you want to also make sure that you have your book formatted. Ignore the fact that Amazon gives you, um, unless, okay, simple fiction books, most people can figure out how to do their on their own. But if it has anything else in it, if it has anything special in it, have someone do it for you. Even though Amazon has the here's how you format your book, you guys, I've spent so many hours of my life trying to get ebooks look just to look just right or having to get the interior look just right and then you load it and something's wrong and all this stuff. It is worth the my that the you know not having to deal with all of that stuff. But more importantly, you don't want to be the person standing at the back of a room selling a book after you've given a great presentation and people are excited about you and excited about your book and then they come and I this has happened to me before, not as the author, but as the person. I heard this great person. I wanted to buy their book. I walked up to the table afterward, all excited. I picked up their book. I opened it and I put the book right back down on the table because it was clearly not formatted properly. The paragraphs were all over the place. There were just globs of paragraphs together. And I was like, I can't, I cannot. I can't, I can't buy this book because I won't be able to read it. So, you know, make sure make sure you know what you're doing on the interior. Then when it comes to distribution, make sure that you you understand what it means to be wide versus just taking one channel and going through it. Are you setting yourself up for success by if you really want to be in libraries and in um, book book stores through retailers? Are you are you putting it uh, into Ingram Spark and making sure that it's set up the way that it needs to be set up so that giving it the right discount. I've seen people load it into Ingram Spark, but then only do a 5% discount. No bookstore on this planet is going to buy your book at a 5% discount um, unless you have a very special relationship or a special deal with them. So it's, it's, the, it's the spending the time to know all of those details to set yourself up so that you can do this properly. Um, and then having the the, the uh, facilities in place to grow your audience, because guess what? Even if you have written the best book this world has ever seen, if nobody knows about it, nobody's gonna buy it. And unlike chocolate or wine or anything else that we buy over and over, those are just the top two on my mind clearly right now, um, 
a book you buy once and then you don't buy it again unless it was so good you buy it for a friend. So you have to constantly be working at growing your audience. If you're not exhausted by this point in time, you're not hanging with me on all of this stuff because it's a lot. It's a lot. So I just want to take a pause right here and say you can do these things by by doing small chunks at a time and setting yourself. Remember, I mentioned a strategy, having a strategy so that you're not trying to do it all at one time so that you have a block of 15 to 30 minutes a day that you're dedicating or an hour, however long it takes, dedicating to other things. Maybe you block a couple hours on Saturday morning before the kids are up or in the evening, um, you know, before you do whatever. Um, to, to work on these things and small consistent actions, I promise you, will get you a very long way. Um, so don't feel like you have to just like do all this stuff in one day. And the other thing is that there are so many people who can help you with some of the pieces of this process that even if you're working from a very small budget, sometimes going ahead and paying somebody to do different pieces of the puzzle will actually free you up to be able to be far more successful um, as you're trying to grow your business and make sure that you're professionally published. Okay, so then use the tools that our partners allow us, um, uh, that provide to us so that we are pu professionally published. If you just go to Google right now and type in the IBP industry standards checklist, you will find a very lovely PDF download that tells you exactly what you should have on your copyright page, on your cover, on the back of your cover. You know, you can really tell the difference between a self-published and a, and a non-self-published book based on what's on the back of the cover and the spine of the cover. So use that checklist to make sure that you have all the pieces in place um, that, that people, that retailers, librarians, and, and buyers need to have. Um, and then make sure, I've, nailed, I've gone way overboard on this one, you get it, cover designers, graphic designers, typesetters, editors. But, but if this is overwhelming and scary to you, I want to nip a myth in the bud. Not all people that charge you money for services are bad. There are some great people out there, myself included, Pro Writing Aid included, many other companies that are freaking good at what we do, but we have to charge money because it's a business. Um, and But you can hire people to help you get through the process to make sure that you're doing it. And even if it's only an investment that you make on your first book or maybe your second, if the first book didn't go very well, then you can, um, then you can learn the process with them and do better the next time and not have to pay for as much of the support maybe. Um, there are also, you know, um, publishing assistants and virtual admins and things like that that are getting really good at supporting authors um, to do all of these types of things. So don't be afraid to make some investments, but I would encourage you to make smart investments along the way. Um, and if you have zero budget whatsoever, it's going to be a harder road for you, um, but there's lots of free resources out there. And if you have time, there's tons of stuff that you can get to help you do these things and to learn these things. The Women in Publishing Summit is one great example example um, of some resources out there. Okay, here we go. The necessities to publish like a pro. Professional book and professional is across all genres. Just what is it? What are what? And you have to know your genre to know what a professional book looks like. Because for some people, if they look at certain genres, they might think that doesn't look very professional. But if that's what the genre expects, then that's the professional book. It's well-designed, cover that meets the genre expectations, great um, description, great sales copy, great interior layout, all of those things looks fabulous. Copyright page set up like it's supposed to, proper um, uh, front matter and back matter, all of those things. Then to have a timeline with all the key steps and um, have a project management system. And don't let that word scare you either. That just means set up your plan and kind of know, okay, I know I estimate it's gonna take this much time for me to do editing, this much time for me to get it to layout, this much time, and set those things out over a timeline. Our, we have, when we walk a book through from start to finish, it's probably more than 150 steps now. We have a checklist that goes to da dun da dun da dun do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. Um, and, and that keeps us on track with making a repeatable process every time. 
have your own ISBN for the love of God for every single um, for every single version of your book. Um, this will bite you in the rear end if you don't whenever you want to go wider um, or or do other things with your book. So it's very, very easy. You can buy a pack of 10 for $250 from Bowker um, and uh, other companies can sell them to you as well. If that's way outside of your budget, a lot of publishing partners or places can sell you an ISBN that is attached to you and your book. Um, and then the imprint, which I talked about before, creating that imprint so that you look uh, a step above the rest. Okay, this is a big one, um, especially for fiction authors, and that is to really know and understand your comps, the norms of your genre, including the pricing and what your audience is expecting. So the comps are the comp titles, other books in your genre that are performing really well or um, that you want to uh, emulate as you go out there. Um, I've seen people write and publish a paperback fiction book and price it at $28. Um, that is not normal. So you need to make sure that if you're publishing a fiction romance book, that's a paperback book, that you're looking at what other books are, you know, the norms in that area and, and, it, and making yours right in that area, not pricing it way outside of that. So there are those things that you have to do a little bit of time on. And then for your launch and for the publishing and distribution, making sure that you have all the pieces that you need to set yourself up for success with the placement of the book and so that it's available for people to find. This is one thing I wanna say about distribution, you guys. Just because your book is made available on a platform doesn't mean that it's, that it's accessible to everyone. And I'm gonna tell you right now, do not, if you want bookstores and libraries um, to access your book, particularly retailers, um, libraries will go from different places and that's really a, a library decision, a local library and county library decision. But for retailers, um, do not pick expanded distribution on Amazon because what happens is it tells Ingram Sparks um, um, thing because you're technically distributed to Ingram Spark, but you're not really. I don't really understand the back end of it. I just know that if you pick expanded distribution when you go to load your book to Ingram Spark so that book uh, retailers actually can buy your book, it's a very complicated um, thing to sort out. So just don't do expanded distribution on Amazon and instead load your book to Ingram Spark. And we have on um, our YouTube channel, the Write Publish Sell YouTube channel, I have a tutorial on exactly how to load your book to Ingram Spark and to know what all the different things mean. Um, but, but understand that just because you do distribute your book more widely does not mean that it just pops up in front of retailers and that they know it's there. It's still very key that you do a targeted marketing campaign and put your book in the places that it needs to be to catch their attention. Um, review sites uh, like NetGalley, as an example, where people are actually looking for the up and coming books. But to be able to do that, that means that you have to have your book finalized months before you launch it so that you have the time to do those types of things. Um, then determining whether you pre-order or not, there's about 50 different ways to decide to do that. We generally put our books on pre-order for a lot of different reasons, which I'm happy to talk to you about at a different time, but it doesn't work for every situation. So you'll have to um, you know, think about why you want to put your book on pre-order or why it wouldn't be good and go through that. And then um, for, especially for well, for any, for any organization, actually, we were just looking at a book box for one of our fiction books. I used to say that this was more of a nonfiction tactic, but this is also something fiction authors need to know. If you're trying to get your book into a, um, a, a subscription box or maybe some other thing where they would like to be able to order a bulk order of books, then you need to know how to bulk order, how to offer discounts, how to price it so that you cover your expenses and hopefully still make a small amount of money, but also give them a big enough discount that they want to include your book. And for nonfiction books, you'll see this a lot. Like if you're going to um, a conference or you're doing a workshop and you include your book in part of that um, pricing package, you know, you want to make sure that you are are, are doing it in a way that everybody wins. Okay, 
this is my favorite slide. And I'm sorry, I don't mean to, I don't mean, I am a very nice person. I don't mean to make fun of anyone. And I know when these things happen, it's traumatic. Um, and I know because almost every oops on here, I have actually made myself. Um, and some of them recently, because guess what? Some of the worst offenders are the people who teach how to do it. And then are like, ah, I got this. Boom, publish, oops. Um, so these are just common things. And I want people to avoid <laughs> the tears and the embarrassment that comes from some of these oopses. Um, this one's we've talked about so much, but when, when, you're trying, let's say you write a vampire book for a vampire genre and your picture has a picture of very happy looking people holding flowers. Uh, nobody who buys vampire books is ever going to buy that book because they like dark red blood, you know, kind of skanky looking people, you know, you know, vampires on the, <laughs> on the covers um, or, or Twilight type covers, a little bit different. Those are, you know, again, the genre, YA vampires versus kind of vampires but make sure you know those types of things and then not having the key information that you need on the back of the book the price and the barcode the um the category the you know the stuff that you need to have which is all in that um ibpa checklist okay so the library of congress control number has to be applied for before your book launches um, you can still submit your book to copyright. So these are, this is another thing that people don't understand is there is a difference between the Library of Control Congress um, number on your copyright page and actually filing a copyright, which is another oops that I need to put in here. Some people file for that, what's called the PCN, which gives you the LCCN. It's like speaking a different language here. Um, but that's on your copyright page, but that is not filing for your copyright. So those are two very distinct and different processes. And you cannot file for a Library of Congress control number after your book has been published. Whether or not every single book that's published needs an LCCN, I don't really know. Um, we always do it because it's the best standard practice, but um, there may be plenty of reasons why you don't. could have that discussion sometime. But your ISBN is definitely a, you, you just, you need it. You need your own because it is like it's it's the barcode, right? It's the information. It's all the little metadata out in the in the in the world that when somebody looks up your ISBN, they know the price, they know the publisher, they know all this key data about your book. So you want to own that. Okay, this is a big one. And let me tell you, sometimes Amazon will publish your book within an hour after you put it on there, but it never fails. That happens when you do it like a week in advance, expecting that you're, it's going to take a few days and then boom, it's up like immediately. Uh, it never fails if you try and publish your book the day before launch day or certainly on launch day. It will take those full 72 hours guaranteed. Um, and I see this oops probably more than anything else. People straight up panicking because they've been doing all this marketing to their book for October 2nd launch and they didn't hit publish until October 1st and October 2nd comes and goes and there's no book for people to buy. So pay attention to that. Also, just because you make it through the first review, the first technical review on Amazon does not mean that they won't reject your book when you hit publish. We've had this happen before too. There could be something that's, that makes it through the initial thing that when you actually go to publish it, oops, they find something that's outside of the lines or, or whatever. There's a problem. There's a copyright violation that's flagged, even if it's not. It, it, so many random things can happen. So it's very, very good to have enough time to make sure you are squared away. Um, we've already talked about the uh, just people not knowing what an interior should look like and thinking that their design looked okay. Um, and I'm bad at this. I am bad at the design. This is one of the reasons why I hire other people to do it because otherwise it would just be like random dashes and dots and all kinds of stuff all over the place. Excuse me. So make sure that, that, but you want your book, you want when people open your book, oh my goodness, especially if it's something like a cookbook that just needs to be beautiful. People want beautiful pictures of food. Like you have to have them done really well. And that can get very expensive on certain types of books. This is a big one. I've made this mistake recently. We, um, and I just really want you to not do this, but this is one that a lot of people do is they do not 
get order a print proof before they go live with their book. I don't know if you've ever noticed when you're publishing in Amazon, you can do the before you hit publish my book, you the, it gives you the option of order a print proof. So you want to take that option and they'll send you a print proof and it can take up to two weeks to get them depending on how slow things are happening on the back end. So plan for that time. But I cannot tell you enough how different a book looks in print than it does on a PDF. We can, we have gone, we have done like seven rounds of revisions on books before and thought we are so good. This is amazing. And then we open it up and on page two, when is spelled wine or something that doesn't that your, our eyes skipped over or, or whatever. So it is so important to have a hard copy version of your book in your hands. Um, if you're doing, if you're just doing an ebook, then you just hope that you are, are looking at it. They, um, very, very closely, but do order a print proof if you're doing a print book. And then rushing to publish. This is a big, it's a big oops. It's a big mistake. It's a big first timer or I didn't know better type thing. So if you did it this way, when, when I um, did my very first book, we literally finished the layout um, the day before publishing. And it was taking a little less time. There weren't so many people pushing books through back when we published that um, years ago. So it did actually publish on launch day as it was supposed to, but that's not the way you should do it. You should have plenty of time um, to make sure everything is in place, to make sure that you have your print and uh, you know, to, to make sure that your interior is justified properly, all of those types of things. Um, but a lot of uh, authors will try to publish their book before it's not ready. It just needs, I know you're sick of it. I know you're tired of writing and revising and all those things, but it sometimes books just need a little more time to simmer before they're ready to get out there. Um, people who don't spend any time building an audience and, and think that they'll market once the book is out there, they, they rapidly find out that that's really hard to do. And, um, and then, you know, just it, rushing to publish just encourages mistakes. And we know this from any time that we have, um, that we have gone outside of our process and tried to do it faster, we almost always make mistakes uh, because that's just what happens when you're in a rush and you're not following the process the way that it should be. Um, if these are things that you feel like you need a lot more information on, I put the link of our course down there. I'm not pitching to you guys. I really want to share as much as I can, but I can't teach all of this stuff to you in one hour. So it's at the end of the slides as well too. Um, so some of the main resources, I've talked about some of these a lot already, um, but you've got your professional organizations, then you have your publishing partners, and not just places like Publishers Weekly and Kirkus, but I also consider ProWriting Aid, um, anybody who is out there providing information that is useful to you to help you learn how to publish better uh, is a publishing partner. And then, of course, you have the boutique publishers who who call themselves publishing partners um, and and um, and service providers who help you publish. Uh, we consider Write, Publish, Sell a publishing partner because we partner with you through the process to get it done properly. But then other organizations, just uh, things to people to know about. Bowker, where you can get your um, your ISBNs. You don't need to pay for barcodes in most situations. You can get them from places from free. The thing with the barcodes is you need to make sure that they're formatted properly and a good cover designer can, can do all of that for you. The Library of Congress, of course, um, tons and tons of training programs. There are so many blogs and podcasts and educators out there. I mean, there is a ton of information out there to help you. Um, get that professional development that you need to have done. Okay, I'm uh, I'm running out of time, and I want to be able to answer some questions. So, um, just in the, on the note of thinking like a business person, um, it's really important that you have uh, an understanding of of the business stuff so that you don't wind up getting in trouble. And I know we have people from all over the world. So of course, this is just going to be based on my knowledge of American business setup. So whatever in, in, a, in the United States, depending on how you're doing things, you probably want to set, may or may not want to set up an LLC, it just depends. Um, you want to check with your site to see, with your state website um, of uh, the Commerce Department to see what their recommendations are. 
taxes are a big thing. If on your website in the US, I'll speak to the US here, if you are just doing a pass through sale, and what I mean by that is if all you have is a link to go buy on Barnes and Noble, Noble or a link to go buy on another IndieBound or a link to go buy on Amazon, you are not responsible for taxes or any of that stuff. The company that's that's doing the sale is going to do that. And then of course, you don't have to worry about it. But if you are doing anything where you are actually the one collecting the money and selling the book, then you need to be very sure that you have in place the right things. Does your state require you to have a retail license? Are you supposed to be um, collecting taxes? All of those things. So think about those types of things. When it comes to the legal stuff, oh my gosh, you guys, between copyrights, contracts, if you're working with other people or publishing partners, other agreements, Privacy policies on your website. Your website needs to have a privacy policy, especially if you run Facebook ads, if you collect email addresses, if you do anything at all. And then, of course, email guidelines in terms of who you're allowed to email and how you're allowed to email. And because of GDPR rules, um, most email CRMs now, which is a, a customer relations management tool or an email, um, there, there's another name for them too, too but um, most of them now have an option that you can put in there so they identify when someone is from a GDPR country and says you need to do this step for them before you can send them emails. So, um, but make sure you're not just collecting email addresses and sending emails from your Gmail account to sell your book because that's all kinds of no, 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 no. Um, accounting. Do you know what you can have for um, write-offs, tax write-offs, and, and what you should be adding up for expenses? Pretty much anything. If, if it was done to help you um, get better at your business, including writing courses, including buying a ticket to a conference, almost all of those can be um, tax write-offs. Again, I'm not an accountant, check with an accountant. Um, and then the things that you need to make sure that you're able to do this entire process running it as a business. Who can you partner with to help you get this stuff done? Okay, so there you go. In, in 45 minutes, I just downloaded everything that I've learned in the last decade on you guys. <laughs> so, all right. I did promise you that I would just touch on launch um, really quickly because it's so important to success of, of your book is, is launching that book properly. Um, oh boy, this is another fun one in there. Just talking about completion dates and, uh, and milestones and all of that kind of stuff. But you do want to make sure that you're giving yourself enough time so that you can um, hit goals and objectives to hit you to get to a place. So it's like people often ask me what I do. And sometimes I say I'm an author coach and a publisher, but a lot of times I say I'm a project manager because that's really what I'm doing. I am managing the project of getting books from written all the way through the publishing. And you really do need to give yourself enough time to set this up for success. So learn as much as you can about the whole process, develop a timeline to do it well, hire a coach to help or not hire help. It doesn't have to be a coach, but you might just hire assist, an assistant to help you do some research on keywords and, and those types of things. Um, learn about running a business. Um, those are obviously US type sites, but Google is your friend. You can find so much great stuff on Google. Okay, so to give yourself time on your launch strategy, we like... I won't even set a publication date until we have a book in a final format, until it's been laid out and we have a final copy, because we at a minimum want three months from that point for, for marketing. I prefer six to nine, sometimes even 12 months. Big houses do a 52 weeks almost as uh, like it's, it's a year almost for them um, in most cases. So develop your strategy on what you're going to do to create what you need to build buzz and build your audience and make sure that you have readers when you launch your book. Um, this is, could be an oops of launching as I see a ton of authors in, in writing groups and in author groups spending a whole lot of time and energy and effort trying to get their book in front of those people. And those are great if you're looking for blurbs and maybe reviews, but not for sales. Um, you, want, you need to be in front of readers, in front of people who are trying to buy your book to do that. You can partner with other authors for um, promotional things. Uh, today is October 1st, which is the beginning of pregnancy and infant 
um, Loss Awareness Month. And so we have a bunch of authors because that's what I started writing about. I have attracted many authors who write on that topic. So we're doing a big bundle this month of our books at a discounted rate and a, and a free book bun bundle um, to grow our email list with the free one and then to get our books out into the world um, with the paid one. So you can partner with other authors to do things like that. Be consistent. Um, don't just decide to market one day and then stop for another. It's it's just like anything else. You have to do small actions over time or 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 batch time, and then don't stop at your launch. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, so the Women in Publishing Summit, just very quickly, I know Lisa already dropped the link in there. I want to say something about this. Okay, so um, it's always been a free uh, summit with a an opportunity to buy the All Access Pass. This year we're changing it up because we want to still provide free as a baseline because we know that's very important for some people, but we're moving to a true conference um, setup on the other stuff. So the stuff that's in the conference section will not be available for the free area. So I, I'm telling you that now because when you get to your, we have it set on very low early bird pricing right now. When you go to register for free, you may still register for free. Okay, you don't have to toggle the button. So I just want to explain this because there is still going to be a lot of great content and you might not want to buy the conference ticket until you see what the agenda is and we don't have that finalized. So I totally get it. But I did want to let you know that there is the option to bump up to the conference ticket now at the reduced early bird price. But trust me, we will be sending out plenty of emails um, to you if you register for the free. We will send out plenty of emails before that price goes up so that you have an opportunity to look at the, um, at the whole agenda and make sure that you want to purchase it before you purchase it because I understand that as well. Okay, we made it. I made it. Oh my right, goodness, good. 10 minutes so got, is there. <laughs> we've got 10 minutes and we've got quite a few questions here. So let's just, let's get right to it. Okay. Um, oh, now I'm looking. Some of these things you have answered as we've gone along. And I did disappear to go put my kids to bed for 10 minutes. So forgive me if I ask questions. So you answered in your presentation. <laughs> That's okay. Okay, so Maria says, um, would you recommend starting with an ebook first and then doing a print book on the same topic or do them both all at the same time? I always prefer to do everything at the same time. One, um, but there's different strategies to this. Some people like to do one first, build up an audience with that first book and then do a relaunch, a, a second launch with it. But your costs and the things that go along with it, there's not a whole much, uh, there's not a whole lot difference between that. You know, it's one additional cover basically to do a print, a print book. So, um, the, the benefit of doing it all together is that you can just go really big with this one massive launch. You have everybody's attention on you and people like different formats. I like to read a book in print. I know a lot of people that refuse to buy print books. They only want eBooks. So it, this again comes back to a very um, standard explanation of saying, what do your readers want? Do your readers only want eBooks? Then do eBooks. Okay, great. Um, Ron says you, you use the word comps a couple of times. Is this an abbreviation for a larger word? Yes, comp titles, comp comparative titles or competition titles. I've heard people use both, um, but basically it is the other books who are um, performing, in, who, are, who are selling well in your genre, basically the other books similar to yours, the other books that you want to make sure that you are um, on par with when you're launching. Okay, good question. Um, Bev says, um, what was it that we're not supposed to select on Amazon distribution? <laughs> ah, global distribution. Keep it to, if you, uh, because, uh, well, there's a long, really long explanation behind it, but if you want global distribution, load it to Ingram Spark. Okay. Good. Um, when would you recommend to file the copyright for the book? Once it's fully formatted, designed and completed, or once it's written? So I would do it as soon as you can, um, as soon as you have a final version. Okay, so you have to have it final version because you have to upload the final PDF to them. But the point of a copyright is to protect you. So they just need, they need to see as final of a version as possible so that if somebody steals your work, they can come back to that comparison and say, this is what was copyrighted on October 1st, 2020. Um, but you know, you can't just upload a draft. It has to be a, a, a formatted version, but I would do it before you publish. <laughs> okay. Um, 
what's the website to purchase ISBNs? Bowker, but it's actually, Bowker is the company. The website, I believe, is myidentifiers.com. I think if you search Bowker plus ISBN, you'll find it. Okay. Okay, good. Um, Nicole says, you said to make sure that you have readers when you launch. So what kind of activities accomplish this? I feel like this is a really big question. So I'm yes, going to drop a link <laughs> now to um, a webinar that we did a couple, well, we've done two on book marketing in the last couple of weeks that are all really sort of indie focused and there's lots of really good activities there. Um, so have a look at one by Nick Stevenson and one by, um, one called Turn Your Book Marketing Tactics into Strategy. That was a really good one last week. Um, but do you wanna give just some headline ideas? Uh, well, anything Nick says do, he's amazing. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm a big fan of his, but basically you have to, um, what we do is we try and get in front of as many reviewers as we can prior to the launch process. So that's a process of researching, of using tools like NetGalley, Goodreads, um, uh, Story Origin, Book Sirens, all of these different um, places that you can actually load copies of your book is a great way to get readers who like those types of books talking about them and then a million other things. And then a million other things. And I, there's, <laughs> it's one of those questions that you can do so many different kinds of things. So you just need to find the things that feel good for you. If you don't exactly. feel good about doing YouTube videos, don't do YouTube videos. If you feel better writing articles, then do that. That's There's right. a million things you can do. You just have to find the thing that you don't find scary. That's right. That's my theory anyway, right? <laughs> uh, Jonathan says, what's the typical budget range for a full end-to-end -end indie publishing process if you use best practices? Well, I can tell you that when we do our entire process from start to finish, as I've just described it, we will spend, depending on how the cost to print the book, depending on the cost of formatting the book, because it, different, it differs from genre to genre, um, but we will spend anywhere between about $6,000 to $10,000. I want to tell you, though, that you can, as an indie you can make that a much smaller budget and still have, you know, varying success. So I would say you should budget, depending on how heavy the editing is for your book, I would say you should, you would be perfectly fine budgeting $3,500 to $5,000. Okay, great. Um, does the publisher provide the LCCN? Uh, if you are working with the publisher, they should. They should be applying for that um, number, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, someone, oh, I don't know what the name is here. Um, someone says, my editor thinks I should try and get an agent and go the traditional publishing route. Do you think traditional publishing brings greater sales in the end? Oh, that's the loaded question. Um, I will tell you that my experience has been traditional publishers have inroads that indies just do not have right now. It's just the fact of the matter. Um, we fight battles all the time, no matter how good we are, there's still things that if we were not a, a hybrid press or indie published that we would be able to do differently. So there are some a, a, um, advantages to it. There are a lot of advantages actually, but there are a lot of disadvantages too. And the primary disadvantage is losing control of your process. And there's a lot of people who have said that the cover, they hated the cover, they hated changes made in the book. The timeline took years. And um, so, you know, it, you really have to, if your editor thinks it's good, you know, I would ask your editor why they think that, like, do they know similar authors who have had written a similar type book and had success? Um, but it's it's worth a shot. I I believe it's worth a shot because there are some great things with traditional publishing. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm dropping a book here as well in the chat that's all about weighing up the, your different options for um, traditional versus hybrid versus indie publishing because there's definitely pros and yeah, cons to each. Yeah. Um, and if you can get past the the bouncers that guard the gates mm -hmm. to get into traditional publishing, there's a lot of machinery there that will help your yes. book go a long way. Agreed. But I, I mean, think how heartbreaking it would be if your baby, your book that you birthed yourself, then ended up with a cover that you hated. I just, <laughs> that it would be the most heartbreaking <laughs> thing for a writer. So I don't know. It's it's pros and cons to each. Everybody just has to weigh it up themselves. Absolutely. Um, so do you know anything about Safe Creative? Um, somebody is saying they're outside of the U.S. and they register their books on Safe Creative. I don't. I've never heard of that before. I'll have to look it up. Safe I'll look Creative. It up. 
Sorry, See, we can't help learning you with something that new one. every day. <laughs> Next time we attend Alexa's session, she'll have an answer for that one. <laughs> Um, uh, somebody's asking if there's going to be a replay yet. Um, we'll put the replay on our prowritinga.com slash webinars. If you look at the top, it says past webinars and you can see everything there. So we'll have a recording of this up on that page on the website uh, by mid-afternoon tomorrow, would, if, if everything goes well. Um, do you know what the LCCN equivalent is for Canada? Oh, I don't. I should know this because we're working with Canadian authors right now, but I haven't I haven't looked into it yet. They're, the Canadians have such a unique system because your government provides all the stuff to you for free. Amazing. Um, so I don't even know, like I know there's no such thing as an international copyright type thing. I don't know. Is this something you know about? Like the difference on... So, no. so the, the the Library of Congress is a is a U.S. thing. So I don't know if Canada has their own like Library of Congress where they literally catalog books published. Um, so I'm sorry, I can't answer that one either. I'll look that one up. <laughs> I know international audience here tonight. Um, okay, so one more here from Eric. When you create an imprint, do you need to create a legal entity to call it something fictitious, like something press? Or can it just be completely fake and not a legal entity? I think that goes back to your question when you were talking about your- yep, The imprints. You can make the imprint be whatever you want to. And you can have as many imprints as you want to. We just keep adding and adding them. So- <laughs> And so they're not legal entities. They're just, you give they're, the name, they do, make it up and- Okay, so, so this is where it comes back to the question of should you establish your own business or not? So for me, I have my um, my imprints as DBAs under my business. So that's a, that I don't want to get into that because that's a question for your lawyer or accountant or whomever does all <laughs> that kind of stuff for you and I don't want to tell you something that gets you in trouble but you don't the, the answer is it does not have to be a legal entity it can just be a name attached to the book okay okay cool um one more from Steve he says just to be clear if I publish an ebook on Amazon I should get an ISBN and not use their ASIN I'm publishing 45 short stories and novellas as ebooks over the next 18 months. Boker charges 575 for 100 ISBNs. It's a bit steep considering I'm going exclusive with Amazon using KU and KDP. Okay, if you're going exclusive, then you don't need an ISBN. The ISBN for ebooks is for if you're planning on publishing anywhere else, like if you're trying to put it on Apple or um, get it into Overdrive or anything like that, then you need an ISBN. If you're never planning on going off of KU, then just... Um, then just stick with the, and you'll get an ASIN, in reg ASIN regardless of whether you have an ISBN or not. So, but yeah, you don't need to buy all those ISBNs if you're staying um, KDP Select. Okay, and that is our one hour time limit. I feel like we got through most of the questions. There's still a couple here. Apologies if I didn't get to yours. I'm sure you could send Alexa an email and she would answer your questions. She's good that way. Absolutely, anytime. Sign up for the summit. We will talk more about all of these things. Yeah, I mean, I can't recommend the summit enough. There's just so much really amazing information and interesting people. And so we're just like sharing all of this knowledge and <laughs> just come away knowing way more than you did going in. So um, yeah, thanks, Alexa. Thanks for being here again. Thank you so much. It was good to see you. All right. And thanks everybody who's come out again. And for all those new faces, it's good to see you. And we'll see you next time. Bye.